Hello everyone. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the realities of financing university. How much does it cost me to study at the University of Cambridge? It ain't cheap, let me tell you. I always get a lot of questions from people asking me about the cost of my studies. Financing university is clearly a big concern for a lot of people. In this video, I just want to set it out clearly for everyone and be as transparent as possible. This video will be specific to people living in England and Wales who are studying at UK universities just because that's what I have knowledge about that is my situation and I have no idea about cost of university when it comes to universities outside the UK or international students studying at universities in the UK. So if you are in that position, I can only suggest looking up online, looking at university websites to get information that way. But yeah, I don't wanna incorrectly inform anyone. Also in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the current situation when it comes to tuition fees and loans. This could change in the future. I don't know what the government will decide in the future, but yeah. 2019, hello, this is the situation. And yeah, obviously my experience is studying at the University of Cambridge, so I will be giving examples from that. But also financing Cambridge University is much the same as financing most other universities in the country. So yeah, hopefully this video is helpful to lots of you. My bulk cost for university is tuition fees. <laughs> tuition fees are £9,250 per year. It's the same for most universities in the country and the government decides that £9,250 cap on how much universities can charge. Next, we'll move on to my accommodation cost. So costs of accommodation can vary between universities and even colleges within Cambridge. So I've actually got the figures that I spent on my accommodation in my years of university so far. So let me just get my laptop out. In my first year, I spent £4,200 on my accommodation. It was a short license. I did have to move out my stuff in the holidays, so I actually only had the room for 27 weeks that year. So it worked out at £156 per week for my room. Then in my second year, my accommodation cost more. It cost £5,200. Although bear in mind that I did choose this particular room knowing it would be more expensive. Also in second year, my room license was for longer. So I had my room for 32 weeks, meaning it worked out at about £163 per week. And in my first and second year, both those rooms were en suite rooms. And in my opinion, they were of quite a high standard. In my third year my accommodation isn't going to be quite as nice i haven't chosen as fancy a room it's not en suite so it is cheaper and i'm going to be paying 115 pounds per week for this room but my room license is longer so i have a long license that lasts 39 weeks this year meaning overall i'm going to be spending 4500 pounds on my accommodation for third year i did a little bit of a calculation on my calculator <laughs> and on average i am spending £4,633 on my accommodation per year. I don't like saying these figures out loud because it just sounds like such a lot of money. In my case at Cambridge, we get accommodation supplied to us by the university for all the years of our undergraduate degree. So we don't ever move out of college. We are essentially in halls for the whole of the degree. At other universities, typically you're in halls for your first year, which is university accommodation. And then in your later years, you move out and find your own accommodation. So the cost of university accommodation can vary massively depending on what quality of accommodation you're going for and also where you're living. So my sister's just started university in London and her room is £220 per week. And she also has no choice but to have that on a long license for 39 weeks, meaning how much is it in total? £8,600 for the year for her accommodation. Almost double what I'm paying in Cambridge. So you can see the difference in location does have an impact on the cost. Okay, so then aside from the tuition fees and accommodation costs, you have other living costs. This can include things like food, toiletries, clothes, entertainment. You might need to pay for utilities like electricity, gas, or the internet. Although because of my situation that I'm living in halls, this is all included in my accommodation for my three years, but that might be a separate cost if you're at other universities and living in external accommodation. So whilst I've been at university so far, I have been keeping track of everything I've spent. And in my second year of university, my living costs, like separate to the accommodation costs, have amounted to about £3,700 for the year. Now this £3,700 does include things like ski trip, 
Boat Club Camp, which was subsidised, but both of those were trips away, so they obviously have contributed quite a large chunk to that. And also Mabel, we have our fancy balls at Cambridge. Tickets are about £150 for those, so that bumps it up. Although it is worth noting that the Mabel cost is trying to be brought down for people with lower household incomes. If you've watched my vlog, you'll know that I am mostly catered at university and I go to the college cafeteria for one meal per day. Being partially catered does cost me more than if I was self-catered, but for me, I think it's worth it. I think I've spoken about my reasons in other videos. At Jesus College, most students pay a kitchen fixed charge each term, which is about £180. This then subsidises our meal costs at the cafeteria, and per term I spend on average £350 in the cafeteria. That £350 includes all of my hot evening meals and also formal dinners that I go to. And then also I obviously need food for my lunches and breakfasts and any snacks I might want, so I shop in Sainsbury's for all of that. And a lot of my living costs go on Sainsbury's. <laughs> I'm one of their top customers. <laughs> so then I got my calculator out again and I found that taking the tuition fee cost of £9,250, the average accommodation costs at Cambridge of £4,633, and then the living costs I spent for second year of £3,007, I added all that together to get £17,583 per year to study at Cambridge, in my case. And like, as I said, you've got to give a bit of leeway either way, but that's what I have been paying. That's a lot. <laughs> I hope you're all keeping up. I'm sorry if this is an overload of information. I'm trying to make it as clear and easy to understand as possible. If you have any more questions, just feel free to put them in the comments below. Okay, so it's not impossible to pay for all this. You'll be glad to know. Through Student Finance England, you can apply for two loans. First loan is your tuition fee loan. This covers the £9,250 for your tuition fees and is paid directly from the student loans company to your university. So you never actually see that money, you just get lumped with a huge debt after uni. Woohoo! The second loan that you can apply for through Student Finance England is a maintenance loan. This helps go towards your living costs and accommodation costs at university. The maintenance loan is means tested. They will assess your household income and where you're living and that will affect how much you can apply for for the maintenance loan. For the lowest household income level, you can apply for up to £8,944. And then as your household income goes higher, that amount you can apply for goes down. However, there is part of the maintenance loan which is not means tested, so you can always get at least, I think it's about £4,000, even if you've got a high household income. Also, the amount of maintenance loan you can apply for can change, so you can actually apply for more if you're studying in London because it's very expensive there. If you're living at home, then you can apply for less maintenance loan because you're gonna have less cost to pay for, like you don't have to pay for accommodation if you're living at home. The maintenance loan is paid into your bank account in three instalments throughout the year. Most students do apply for both the tuition fee loan and at least some of the maintenance loan. I will link below all the nitty gritty details of these loans in the description. They also have a very funky way of being repaid. They're not quite like a normal loan. Once you finish your course, you start repaying your loan if you are earning above a certain income threshold. This threshold is £25,725 per year. If you're above this repayment threshold, you will pay 9% of your income towards paying back this loan. And then another sneaky detail is after 30 years, if you still have a remaining balance on your student loan, it's completely cancelled and you don't have to pay back anymore. I guess it's kind of comforting to know that at least once I reach my 50s, I will definitely be debt free. So because of this detail, only the really high earners actually end up paying their full student loan back. And the majority of students won't actually pay the full balance back. Okay, so that's the loans out the way. Next, um, my parents help me out with my university costs. My maintenance loan just doesn't cover my accommodation and living costs by itself. And so since my parents have an income which is not on the lowest band, so I'm not getting the maximum maintenance loan available, they are expected to help me out with my, you know, 
university costs. Obviously, I'm very grateful to my parents for helping me out, but I'm aware also that not everyone will have that luxury, but the system should be set up in such a way that if your parents physically can't help you out with university and you do have a low household income, then your maintenance loan should be much higher and manage to cover the bulk of your university costs. Okay, next avenue of money is I had savings from my Saturday job during sixth form. So I worked every Saturday while studying for my A-levels. So that was two years working in a local coffee shop. I was quite sensible in those two years as well. I didn't just blow all my money as soon as it came to payday and I did save a lot of it up. And having that amount of cash starting university was such a big help when I started. To be honest, I would highly recommend doing some part-time work in the years leading up to going to uni. It is such great experience. You learn all these new skills, you get a bit more independent as well. And like having these savings does take the pressure off getting a job as soon as you start university. I do think when you start university, a lot of people don't really want to immediately get a job. You want to enjoy making new friends and all the things that university has to offer. I also get a little bit of money from my YouTube channel and I feel so lucky to be able to say that. My hobby is literally helping me fund my studies. It's honestly a dream situation for me. And leading on from that, something I touched on earlier, you can get a part-time job whilst you're studying at university. Or, well, I mean, at Cambridge, you're not allowed a part-time job. And I believe it's the same at Oxford. The university has the opinion that the work is extremely intense and you just won't have time for part-time work whilst studying. I would agree with that, actually. I just don't think there is time to work a part-time job whilst at Cambridge. However, the Oxford and Cambridge university holidays are incredibly long. Our terms are only eight weeks long. So your holidays are actually longer than the time you spend at university, I think, each year. You can make the most of those holidays and get part-time work during that time. Or if you're at other universities which do allow you to have a part-time job, then a lot of students do get part-time jobs alongside their university studies. And there are typically lots of student jobs going in university towns. I guess my one thing I'd say is, when starting university, I personally would rather not have a job. But once you're settled, I don't think there's anything wrong with getting a part-time job at university. I mean, people do tutoring, people do supermarket work, working in bars. You know, there's lots out there, so get searching if you're thinking of that. And also, there are bursaries and scholarships available at lots of universities. For the Cambridge-specific case, there is the Cambridge Bursary Scheme. So on this scheme, undergraduates with a household income um, below £42,620 can get up to £3,500 a year bursary. They don't have to pay this back, it's a gift <laughs> to help finance their studies. Also at Cambridge, more support is available from the individual colleges themselves, so it's always worth checking if you're eligible for any bursaries from them. And yeah, various scholarships are available as well for not just Cambridge, but other universities which you can apply for. You know, you've got nothing to lose. And yeah, that's it for how you can finance university. So let's move on to budgeting. Even if you don't have a massive amount of money available to you, you can make that go the distance if you budget. So you don't have any control over tuition fees, you don't have any control over your accommodation cost, but you can control your living costs. And when it comes to your maintenance loan, you do need to exercise a little bit more responsibility. Don't blow it all in the first week in Freshers Week or on nights out. It's a stupid idea. First thing I'd suggest is making a spreadsheet and keeping track of your money, keep track of what comes in, what goes out. Set yourself weekly, termly budgeting goals. How much am I gonna spend this week on food? How much am I gonna spend for the whole term on food? And be strict with yourself because you will thank yourself later. Keep your receipts, log it all, stay on it. I'm sure there are lots of videos out there on how you can save money as a student. You know, be smart with your supermarket shop. Use the coupons that the supermarket gives out get your points or rewards cards, get the deals, plan your meals out in advance, you can prepare them in bulk or bulk buy, you can share things with your housemates that you aren't gonna use up yourself in a week like milk or cooking oil and in general just assess what your priorities are. Different people are gonna have different priorities and want to spend their money on different things. Decide what's necessary because I think sometimes 
you know, that last drink on a night out might not always be necessary. Do you even remember having that last drink on the night out? Did it make a difference to your night? Because if it didn't, you know, don't get it. Okay, so let's conclude. Let's wrap up. Nobody should be stopped from going to university because they can't afford it. And hopefully there are mechanisms in place to stop this from happening. You know, if you do feel like you can't afford it, look into things like bursaries, scholarships, how much maintenance loan are you eligible for? Can you get some part-time work? You get the idea. And yeah, university is very expensive. But in my opinion, it's worth it. Otherwise I wouldn't be at university. I am hoping that my degree is gonna open lots of doors for me in the future and hopefully make me employable. <laughs> We can hope. And also, you know, I do enjoy learning. I'm enjoying the university experience. So I'm happy to be at uni. Yes, I've got all these loans to repay, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And I also hope that this video helps dispel the myth that Oxford and Cambridge are way more expensive than other universities because they're really not. I think that's it for today's video. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Comment down below any more questions you might have. I'll put a load of useful links in the description as well if you're worried about financing university or want to find out more about it. Subscribe to my channel to see lots of university content. Hit the notification bell so then you're notified every time I upload. Follow me over on my Instagram as well. And yeah, that's it for today. I will see you soon with another video. Bye.